I'm Rob Ito, the Travelling Hypnotherapist, and I help heal with hypnosis. And I'm here with Brandon Peel. Uh, Brandon, I should introduce you first. I'm not sure exactly how to do that. You are an expert in purpose, leadership, and cultural change. Um, you're an author and co-author of four books. The Purpose Field Guide is a 10-week purpose discovery program i think that was the first one you wrote wasn't it uh depends how you're counting because i i wrote some terrible books in the uh late 2000s <laughs> but uh the first purpose book i wrote was the i co-wrote was the purpose activation blueprint in 2015 i think you've also got a new project right now unity lab so if, if I was going to kind of sum up what you do, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I would kind of sum it up as basically helping people, communities, businesses, entrepreneurs to awaken and discover their purpose, what they're, what they're here to do. Is that, that, that's a, it's a big piece of it. Uh, and in doing so, when people discover who they really are, all the other identities fall away. So um, in multicultural uh, countries, which many of us are now, like the United States, we have our identities in weird places like around our gender or around our the color of our skin um, or our sexuality. And when we discover our purpose, we get to like fully be with each other, like soul to soul. And yeah, so purpose is a big piece of it, and it's also about creating a more perfect union, turning pluribus into unum, as our you know national motto is. Would you also say that it's to do with, um, because I'm interested in meditation, and my purpose has become helping first with myself through my own discovery and my own explore, exploration, but also now to help other people to go into their own subconscious inside themselves mm -hmm. to discover who they are and for me that also means letting go of conditioning the things that we've learned that are not necessarily true to ourselves and true to our values does the ego fit into the the, the this purpose work that you do oh yeah <laughs> yeah because i mean the the ego uh is very useful and like you kind of almost think of like the ego and soul like lovers uh the ego needs soul like so this is soul the ego needs it for direction it needs to know like who to be how to act what to do with one's life what kind of relationships so it's it's like it's the keeper of the purpose of kind of the direction of you know our deepest identity mm -hmm. And likewise, the soul needs the ego because without the ego, the soul just like is sitting there like, I don't know what to do now. <laughs> like, like it, it needs the ego to act. Um, so purpose work basically is creating this very conscious marriage between the two. So understanding the different voices of the ego. Um, so there's like, you know, your critic, your skeptic, your image consultant, risk manager, wounded child, understanding their function how they keep you safe, how they help you survive and have good relationships. And then getting permission from those parts to activate this deeper identity, the, like your soul's purpose. I remember because I, I obviously, I met you when I did the 21 day purpose challenge in 2016. Mm -hmm. um, and I did the program online and that was part of it was the identifying those different ego parts and mm -hmm. what, what is their role and what are they? Yeah. I remember that well. And also the vision board, I did that mm -hmm. and I've still got that on my computer. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> and also uh, there was a meditation that you did actually, which was um, a guided meditation where you see your purpose driven self at the end. Mm -hmm. um that one as well was really powerful for me yay <laughs> yeah really and it really helped me as well on my i mean it didn't help me to find hypnotherapy but it helped me on the way um i started off with a different project and you then kindly offered to support me any way that you could mm -hmm. um and that project was more to do with uh 
critical thinking because I come from a background of teaching critical thinking to international students. Mm -hmm. um, so I started a kind of a critical thinking project. Um, and everything that I did along the way helped me to now be able to do what I do now. So mm -hmm. it, it was an amazing journey, really. And it was it was really I was just following my own. I talk about following your intuition, talk, following your intuition, learning how to find where it is. I also had to discover that some people don't know what their oh, intuition is. I didn't know. <laughs> no, I, I, I yeah. no, when I was growing up, I always I was always able to kind of feel what I was always I always had a kind of a, a connection to my intuition, but mm -hmm. I didn't. Uh, I guess over time, I learned to trust it more and more. And the yeah. more that you trust it, the more that everything seems to work out. Absolutely. I mean, and that's, I mean, whether we use the word soul or intuition or higher self or, I mean, that's really all this is. It's like, you know, establishing that connection and, you know, knowing that it's different from, you know, the ideas of your ego or your mind and um, following it. I mean, you're doing it. You're lucky. You're very lucky that um, it's been, or that connection wasn't severed uh, as a kid, which it was for many folks, myself included. Would you say that the intuition, the soul, would you also describe that as subconscious, as this kind of unconscious inner knowing? Or would you consider the subconscious as something different? That's a great question. Um, I would say that uh, in general, uh, especially in you know Western societies, uh, it is you know it's in this subconscious and the unconscious. Um, what uh, you know, obviously the work you do, the work that I do, and, and other modalities are designed to kind of open the channel so that there's if there's more of a uh, porousness uh, of the ego, so you can you can interact with the soul or receive messages from the soul um and ideally you're just kind of living as soul at some point um but yeah i would say there and, and many folks in the field of purpose would say the same thing that uh soul is generally outside of our everyday awareness and it takes some training to have access to it if you don't mind, why did you decide to 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 take me up on the offer of trying the hypnosis? Yeah, well, for a, you know a couple of reasons. One, um, I've I've been I, I've experimented with lots of different modalities and have not yet had a lot of success with hypnosis. Um, I tend to be a very you know what do we call it cognitive mental person. <laughs> um, and, you know, knowing who you are and your heart and that this is your calling uh, to help people, I'm like, oh, maybe I just haven't had the right person. And because um, I have lots of friends who have used this modality and they, they have got a lot out of it. So I was like, yeah, I want to I want to work with Robbie in this. This, this is going to be cool. So that leads perfectly to my next question. When you went into the hypnosis, um, what was the experience like? Yeah, it, it, it felt like a, a space opened up where uh, there was at first a lot of nothingness. Um, and, you know, it's, it's been a couple of weeks now since the session, but the, um, the, the memory that stands out so vividly uh and i and i really got to like experience like the vividness of it. it was the first time i ever did public speaking which uh was probably like a 20 or 21 years old it was electrifying i mean it was just like speaking this giant auditorium to a bunch of my uh classmates you know a couple thousand like it was big and I was nervous and all that. I can, I could, I was brought right back into like who I was at age 20, 21. And that was uh, a, a really powerful moment. Um, Cause public speaking is a huge part of my purpose. 
like it was like this electric thing like this is who you are like you're meant to be doing this sort of thing um so yeah that was that was vivid i mean there's other things too it was filled with like a magenta violet light um there was also that vision at the end of you with the holding over the so I, i've had kind of versions of this before and this this one was different it was um the, the entirety of the U united states was covered in forest so like no planes you know it was just like treetops uh with the exception of these cities it was almost like a like a dome light that um uh, and i could i could hold them in my hands like i was you know ginormous like a like I could walk across the earth in like two minutes, like that big. And I was holding the light of San Diego, just like this, like kind of just like shaping it. You know, and then that's where I live. Um, so that was like a really powerful vision. Just like I could hold it and see this light and shape it. Um, and then all the other cities were lit up as well. Like so, you know, forests and the cities were just like lit up as like lights. So we did the emotional cleaning first, and then mm -hmm. <clears throat> afterwards we did, the, I call it finding direction, which was just you go into a room, there's the past, the present, and the future. Um, the past is supposed to be a memory, so I just ask your subconscious to take you to a memory that shows you what you can do to be healthier and happier. For you, and then the present... Um, what was the present one? <laughs> present one was like, what choices should you make now? And you had the uh, the the ice cream sandwiches. <laughs> yeah, the ice cream sandwiches, and also another one, uh, which was to stop reading the news every day. Like, I I used to just read it once a week, and last year, <laughs> in twenty twenty, I, I was addicted to like like. <laughs> what's happening in the world and what's going on. In the yeah. So, yeah. so yeah, basically to create space and to treat myself well by laying off the ice cream sandwiches. Yeah. <laughs> and then the, the future path was, uh, was what well, the future was then to see yourself if you take these messages. So for you, it was super interesting for me because obviously you've done, you do, you've done and you do so much uh, work on, personal growth, uh, knowing who you are. So it was no surprise to me that through this journey, you discovered basically that you're on the right path, you're doing the right things and keep going the way that you're going. Mm -hmm. But it was still fascinating that uh, for me, your subconscious still gave you messages. It, it, it basically said in the past, you know, my interpretation of your experiences was, you know, continue to face your fear, continue to, to get out there to speak up. Mm -hmm. The present was don't eat sandwiches, don't read the news. I mean, basically you're doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. And then the future was um, a, a similar image to what you've had before, but just, yeah, you are holding that space and you are creating that change. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel that what I do and this type of work, how does this fit into um, the kind of the purpose movement? Do you think mm -hmm. it, it has a place there? Because um, there are folks who bring all different types of modalities into this, you know, this awakening of soul or purpose. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think it's a, it's a powerful, uh, a, a powerful access method for sure. One thing you did say to me at the very beginning, just before we started and when we before we started the emotional cleaning was that you'd got some, let's say, frustration uh, about the situation, particularly in the United States right now. Um, do, do you feel like since that session that some there's, some, there's been some change, some relief? Definitely. Uh, there are. Like I'm less involved, less like, you know, need to stay on the pulse of every, you know, quip a, an American legislator makes. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, I, I think there's also some space in that too, uh, that I'm less reactive to this 
dysfunction that we have in our in our country. Uh, and it, there's like I'm feeling a deeper call to create now. Um, you know, perhaps uh, some new writing projects, some new um, you know course design type things as well. So I don't feel like I'm on hyper alert as much. Uh, younger you. At the end, you went back to the younger self. And I, I remember this version of myself, like a skinny little kid, this giant head of like brown hair <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, gap tooth and freckled and uh, yeah, just such a hyper and loving boy. Um, and just, uh, just to hold him and uh, yeah, so we embraced in this vision, like it was very lovely. Um, yeah, I say like, if you can, like with your powerful imagination, if you can actually feel this younger you in your arms, did you actually feel him in your arms or? Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah, I still do right now. I mean, I can still feel like how my big man hands feel around his tiny arms, like just, you know, just holding his shoulders and arms like that. Yeah. You obviously went into hypnosis. You had that experience. Um, my last question, I think, is just for people watching this video that are considering trying hypnosis with me, would you recommend it? Would you say it's a good thing to do? Folks are at different places in their journey, right? And this is a way to access, you know, something that you don't currently have access to, right? Um, so if you're looking to connect with a different part of your psyche, uh, I found this to be very powerful and I think you will too. If somebody um, has done a session uh, with me, for example, and they've got some insights about what they should do and kind of changes they need to make from the work that you do, what would you recommend somebody to, to then go to? I, I guess maybe I'll, I'll give two, two answers. One is if um, you got to a beautiful place and you have something important to heal, go do that healing. Like go work with a trauma informed therapist or, or some modality that is designed to, to heal, uh, you know, heal wounds because they're going to keep showing up unless you heal them. Um, and then if, if what you got was a vision and you're like, okay, now what do I do? I would look at more at accountability. Like, do I need to work with a coach? Do I have a friend who's also working towards a vision that we can hold each other accountable with like weekly promises? And um, but yeah, I would kind of look at those two things either, you know, healing or accountability. Yeah. Thank you very much, Brandon. My pleasure, Rubido.